Look at the stars each night, and notice, in the northern hemisphere, they appear to rotate counterclockwise around the northern celestial pole, and a star called Polaris. And in the southern hemisphere, different stars appear to rotate around the southern celestial pole in the opposite direction, clockwise. This alone proves the Earth spins. You can see thousands of time-lapsed imagery of this, produced independently by professional and amateur astronomers. As for the Earth's orbit around the Sun, we don't see that because the stars are so tremendously far away. Our trip around the Sun is minuscule in comparison, so our view only changes by a tiny, barely measurable amount, not large enough for us to see. And as for all the other movements, we don't see them because all the stars we see with the naked eye are in the Milky Way galaxy with us, moving at about the same speed and direction with us. Flatards love Polaris. Most seem to think it is directly on the North Celestial Pole, which it isn't, that it doesn't move, which it does, and that the sky rotates around it, which it doesn't really. However, they think it fits their space pizza idea really nicely. For those who think the flat Earth goes on forever as an infinite plane, the night sky must also be some kind of roughly planar object rotating above Earth, which it would do because reasons. Hey! For those who think they live under the dome of a giant snow globe crafted by an elusive space wizard, the night sky must be constrained by the dome in some way, which also places limits on the distance to the stars. A dome-based night sky also rotates because reasons. Hey! Unfortunately for both varieties of flat art, to test these ideas all they needed was a collection of observers at different latitudes. The double star Sadel Melik, or Alpha Aquarius, is pretty much bang on the celestial equator, and so for basic naked eye observations is a good marker for it, just as Polaris is for the North Celestial Pole. These must be the case on the Flat Earth too, so Sadel Melik will be flying around in a circle above the Flat Earth's equator due to some unknown force. And Polaris will circle 40 arc minutes from their North Pole due to some unknown force. Time for the flat arm to get his chums at different latitudes. What would they see? This rather depends on how far away the stars are. Unfortunately for us, the track record of flat art astronomy is not just piss poor, but non-existent, and they haven't figured that out yet. So what can we say about Sadel Melik and Polaris in the flat art fantasy world? Observers at the centre of the Pancake Earth and those on its equator would be able to see both stars, as would every observer in between, and every observer south of the equator. However, reality disagrees. Consider the September equinox when Sad al Melik will be visible at night. An observer at the North Pole isn't going to see much because at the equinox the sky is still too bright. So let's head further south. Someone 80 degrees north will see the celestial pole 10 degrees from his local zenith and Sad al Melik 10 degrees above his horizon. Someone 70 degrees north will see the celestial pole 20 degrees from his local zenith and Sad al Melik 20 degrees above his horizon. Unsurprisingly then, an observer on the equator will see the celestial pole on his north horizon and Sad al Melik directly overhead. Why? Simple. For an observer at a given latitude, their night sky obviously consists of the 180 degrees that they can see from horizon to horizon, with their zenith directly overhead. Polaris is 434 light years away, so he's way, way, way off the top of the screen. Sad al Melik is about 523 light years away, so he is way, way, way off the left of the screen. The angle of elevation of this celestial equator when crossing the observer's meridian is the same as the angle between his zenith and the celestial pole, 90 degrees minus his latitude. It's all exactly what you'd expect from observers sitting on a spheroidal planet rather than a giant disk made by an invisible cosmic mage. What does this pattern of observations look like on the flat art disk world? Well, we know that Sad al Melik is overhead at the equator, and that Polaris is overhead at the North Pole. So far, so good. But we also know that wherever you observe from in reality, that they have an angular separation of 90 degrees. Let's put an observer every 10 degrees of latitude, and add in their lines of sight to Polaris and Sad al Melik. 
where the lines of sight intersect the vertical lines of equatorial and polar observers should provide a triangulation of the height of these stars. Unfortunately, what we find is that to match observations, each star would have to be situated at different heights at the same time, including ground level. This not only sheds some light onto why flat art astronomy has neither explained nor achieved <laughs> anything, ever, but also presents an unresolvable paradox that leads us inexorably to the conclusion that the notion of Earth being flat is not only geometrically impossible, but also complete bollocks. Observers north of the equator looking north will, depending on their latitude, see stars that never set and that circle the celestial pole. Determining how much of the sky is circumpolar is easy. It's given by your latitude. An observer at 63 degrees north in Tron time will see the celestial pole 63 degrees above his horizon, and so any stars with a declination above 27 degrees will be circumpolar. Simple. But what about the southern hemisphere? What will observers in Australia, Southern Africa, and Southern South America see when they look south? Well, according to the Flat Earth, observers in these lands are going to be looking in completely different directions, and they're sat below a sky that rotates above them around a single point. And yet, in reality, these observers will find themselves looking at the South Celestial Pole, and like its northern counterpart, its altitude in degrees above the horizon corresponds with the observer's latitude. Unlike its northern counterpart, the stars will appear to rotate clockwise around the pole instead of anti-clockwise. This is simply because the observer is looking at the same east to west apparent motion in the opposite direction. flat eyed observers will, like the rest of us, be looking at the constellations of Octans, Hydrus, Mensa, Chameleon and Apis. The only difference in what will be seen by two observers in the southern hemisphere looking south at exactly the same time will be rotational. One observer's view will be a rotated view of what the other sees, and the angular difference will perfectly match their difference in longitude. It's exactly the same as happens in the north, and exactly what you'd expect of observers looking outward from the surface of a spheroid, as is the convergence of lines of longitude to a southern pole in the sky. How, though, can observers on a flat Earth looking south see the same thing when looking in different directions from a flat surface beneath a single spinning sky? They can't. It's geometrically impossible. And that's why flat arts have to avoid the topic like the plague. One flat art in the comments to part one attempted to excuse this by claiming that the South Celestial Pole isn't a real pole. Whatever the fuck that means. And that it moves. Unfortunately, what this laughable ad hoc excuse fails to consider is that you can sit and watch the southern sky all night rotating around the South Celestial Pole and the pole doesn't budge one bit. It also doesn't account for how two observers looking south at the same time in different lands can see the same things with only a rotational difference. Had Flatards bothered to travel a few thousand kilometers and look at the sky, they could have reached a simple conclusion for themselves. Both their ad hoc excuses and their Discworld are bollocks.